Hello everyone. This is the first of a series of uh, channeling voices on my podcast called Multiple Voices. I am recording onto YouTube so people will see me. And um, for those of you who listen to me in my podcast, you can imagine what we are doing. You'll hear our drums. Now today I am channeling the souls of Barney and Betty Hill. Why? Well, they be, they came to me like all of the recent spirits come to me. They were earthbound and um, I ritualize their passing as I have done before I started this talk. I also got a series of questions from my YouTube followers that I will be asking. They have been cross, they have been ritualized to cross over. That is done. But they have also asked me to sound the drum after each question. So we'll do that. Who were Barney and Betty Hill? They were an American couple who claimed they were abducted by extraterrestrials in a rural portion of the state of New Hampshire from September 19th to the 20th in the year 1961. It was the first widely publicized report of an alien abduction in the United States. And indeed, the incident came to be called the Hill Abduction. Their story was adapted into a best-selling book in 1966 called The UFO Incident. But in recent years, there have been talk, there has been talk about creating a movie or a TV series series based on this incident. Um, although as of now, 2021, 2021, nothing has been produced. Most of Betty Hill's notes, tapes, uh, and other items have been placed in the permanent collection of the University of New Hampshire, her alma mater. And in July 2011, the New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources marked the site of the alleged uh, craft's first approach, the, the uh, um, UFO's first approach, with a historical mark. This is historical ground. Now, the Hill story was widely publicized in both books and movies, and many uh, psychologists who have worked with abducted victims and uh, worked with past life regression have mentioned them both widely. So there are many things that we know, and of course, so, so much that we don't know. So let me start by showing you some pictures. Now, this was um, a story, uh, uh, first documented air, alien uh, abduction, as I said, the Betty and Barney Hill UFO experience. Now, this is a book cover that I'm showing. Um, the volume was created, written by Stanton T. Friedman uh, and uh, Kathleen Marden. Then here is a picture of the couple, uh, middle-aged. They seem to be middle-aged. Now, this was the 60s, the end of the 50s, and that was the style. You could look at the televisions there to the right. And their, um, their um, luggage, their baggage. Here is a picture of a drawing that them that they themselves drew for uh, for posterity for anyone who interviewed them. You can see there are two pictures at the top 
it looks like a flying saucer where there is a red light on one side and uh, then they go on into explanations of where one end of the the device or the spaceship or uh, the contraption i don't even know what to call it uh had a light and on the other side it also had a light here we have the couple in a black and white picture who are pointing that's they're pointing to um a, an article in the a local paper new hampshire ufo chill you know and and um the the article was written and it it traveled the world over so um let me start by um getting a little bit of warmth from them to see what they want to express This is uh, Betty saying we have so much to talk about. We have so much to say, so very much to say. And thank you for helping us, helping us be with you and cross over. It would have been impossible for us to communicate otherwise. Okay, they, they will start to take questions. Let's see. So the first question. The first question is from um, Jiri. Oh, I won't say the names. I'll just make messes of the names. The question is, is it true that we live in an... AI, AI inverted matrix, um, artificial intelligence inverted matrix, or the inorganic timeline after the arrival of the Archons in Atlantis and Atlantis. Is that true? No, that's not true. That is not true. There. She has another part to her question. How can we protect ourselves from these archons who have infringed on our organic timeline? How many alien races are there? All right. This is Barney saying there are no archons chance but they there are indeed different alien races as many as human races multiply that by 100 that is how many alien races there are okay forgive me every time uh, we have another question does the serpent printed the seventh secret door of the Pandmanabhashwarmi temple in Kerala India does it have any alien spaceship and or dead alien dead bodies inside and if yes then when will the door be opened and its secret revealed to the public this is Barney saying there is no printed serpent and if someone sees a serpent in the temple it was left there by a human 
it is part of the artwork. India has no spaceship, alien spaceship, that belongs to the country itself. Aliens are not Indians. Have aliens come to India? Yes and no. There were sightings, but only three cases of abductions. The door opening is not for us to talk about. It is not information for us to give you or for you to know. Okay. Then you can hear my chair cracking in the background. Um, I have another question. Can certain music unlock feelings and memories deep within us that we may have been sent here as star seeds? Thinking of one in particular, which is hauntingly familiar. No. Anything can make immer make memories emerge. There is no one specific way. Some people use the sound, sense of sound. Others use sight or other senses. This is a no. Star seeds are a name that humans have provided, but there are star seeds, light children, air children, many different words that have been used throughout the years. Star seeds are just one of them. They do indeed define a group of souls that have come from a particular group of origin during a particular time. Okay. The next question is how to find our soul's purpose, how to improve a deteriorating health. This is Betty speaking. You should know by now your soul's purpose. If you say you do not, then you are not working on yourself. You need to concentrate on your soul and find the answers. Health is something we can control and command. If you made negative choices concerning your health, no proper eating, no exercise, no helping your body in any way, you will have health problems. Barney is saying as well, 
Barney is saying there is a percentage of health issues that are hereditary, but they can be cured mostly. Okay. Then we have Then we have what was the real purpose behind their abduction and the many consequent interactions that Betty had with the aliens subsequently. Betty's saying there were not subsequent interactions. I took notes. I was influenced by those hours we were abducted. But my interactions with them, as far as I knew, did not exist. The true reason behind our abduction was to understand what occurred if two humans from different races were to procreate and have children. Would they be different or would their human elements be basically the same as other humans? Well, okay. How did the abduction change their lives in terms of their belief systems or other things? It had a, an effect of opening our minds because we had to believe something we did not believe was possible. It changed our lives because there was a certain amount of notoriety because of the event. I am very happy I was with Barney at the time. Otherwise, no one would be able to believe me. It was very odd and we did not remember immediately but it took us months of talking over and over again to understand what had happened to us okay now I'll go on. I just took screenshots from my YouTube community section and I'm going through them. I have a subscriber who asks, what is the mis mystery behind the Bermuda Triangle? Very simply, the mystery is that it is something humans will never understand. It serves to represent one of the many things humans will not know and are not meant to know. The phenomena of disappearances 
is one way of divinity to remind us of our limitations. This is the definition of that specific phenomenon and many others. Well, then I have another question. Are these aliens positive or negative energies? How do aliens actually exist among us? Do they exist among us in human form? No, they have no human form. They are neither positive nor negative in relation to their energy. They are beings like you and us. Okay, then we have... Why don't other higher civilizations interact with common people directly? Aliens are not a higher civilization and they do interact directly with humans. This is the answer to your question. Okay, let's get to the next. Why do you think your abduction happened to the both of you and not just one of you? Do you believe that either of you have been abducted previously in your past lives? Thank you. As, this is Barney, as I said, we were abducted together so aliens could understand more of our composition as humans and whether our reproduction would create a different form of human. We do not believe that we have been abducted in previous lives. No. Okay, I have another question. Has the earth become purgatory after Corona? This is a negatively posed question. The metaphor of purgatory does, <laughs> this is Barney saying, does not fly here. It is another race coming to get information. In your question, you ask about coronavirus. Many of you do not remember other pandemics and other scourges on the earth, damage that killed so many people. This is part of life on earth. 
And Betty, Betty chimes in, get used to it, get used to it, get used to it, three times. Then we have then we have another question. What is really behind Agenda 2030? Agenda 2030 is a man-made phenomenon. You are a man or woman. You can find this out yourselves. If you ask me a question and you use the word behind, it means you do not trust something or someone. That is the essence of a human's life on earth. They decide whether to trust or not. We cannot give you this answer because you make up your mind alone. Okay, then there's another question. Is there a reason that they have not crossed over? Are they helping family or humanity? Thank you. This question of uh, being earthbound souls has been asked over and over under my videos because people, even if I explain it in the videos in my talks, they don't hear what I'm saying. So I'm going to say it again, but I am not going to say it. You asked the question to Barney and Betty. So let's see who. This is Barney. Barney's talking. We did not cross over because we wanted to bear children so very much and had not had the case of bearing children's children as many as we wanted. This was a problem, and we believed when we were alive that during our abduction, my seminal liquid fluid had been tampered with, and this was the cause for our lack. We did not leave the earth because of trauma, feeling we could only resolve our lives if we had come full circle, but it was impossible. For us, it was a tragedy. Being earthbound has nothing to do with helping someone. We cannot help anyone nor ourselves if we are earthbound. It is not a natural state. Okay. Another question. Will we be free from Taliban's? When will the human race be at peace? The Taliban's as a people will disappear 
in about four to five lifetimes from now they will not reproduce enough to sustain their population. Humans are at peace when they rest in peace, meaning life on earth is for living. Living means literally solving problems every day and making decisions every day. This is life. This is Betty. If you have no problems, you are likely not alive or are very ill and unconscious. Okay, I believe I have a few more, um, two more questions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, two more questions. Let's see. Two more questions. What is a soul family? The name you ask is one of many names. People call them with different names, soul groups, soul family, or other names. They are souls that come from the same area of the universe. Okay, I have one last question. All right. The last question says, I have read that alien abductions are not random, but agreed upon contracts prior to incarnation. Are these abductions and ensuing tests on abductees always safe or can they cause harm to them? They're, they both want to, st they started speaking together. Betty is saying, let me say this, let me say this. Physical harm is relative. And the answer here is no. But a human is made of flesh, blood, emotions, mental cognition and other things harm comes when a person is not able any longer to live because the abduction completely overturned their lives barney is adding barney is saying harm is not intended. Humans are a people who tend to be fearful always. When you hear that expression, they are afraid of their shadow, it is true. Humans are all afraid of their own shadow. This means that most people do not know themselves at all. And one proof of this is the question about a person's sole purpose. If you ask this, you do not know yourself. 
or you do not want to know. We are happy to communicate with you, but see that from the questions, there still is a situation that existed during the 60s. People block out facts. They do not want to believe or refuse to believe. But you will pass and be reborn and perhaps your soul can request a life lesson concerning the unknown or the occult. This will help humanity. They're saying goodbye. Goodbye, both of them. Bye. Bye. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening in and having these questions to ask them. And uh, we'll be back with other channeling voices and mediumship. Bye-bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.